Bingo, we're back here on Think Tech. Ooh, on a Friday. Ooh, Trump week. Ooh, every Friday. Well, uh, next week we're going to change it. We're going to change it to Wednesday, I think. Yeah. Right. And Cynthia Sinclair, Phi Beta Kappa at UH. We're not kidding. This is really important. We only <laughs> deal with the best, Cynthia. Welcome back to your show. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, Trump week. You know, I, I, I titled this. Uh, what did I title this? Let me tell you what I think it should be titled anyway. You know, Trump hasn't been in the headlines. But he's been busy in the back room. He's been busy doing bad things like wiping out uh, environmental regulations and the right. like. No more clean uh, water. Yeah, right. Clean water. Wetlands. Wetlands. That, forget know. it. Yeah. Uh, but let's, let's go down a list. We have many points today. It seems like, you know, one of the connected dots thing about our show is there's more to talk about every single week. And our, our mission, is, our challenge is to try to hold it down. But there's so much coming up with him. Yes. So what do you got on, uh, on there first, Cynthia? Um, well, the Democratic debate um, happened last night, right? Um, it was a big deal. He was deal. flying a plane overhead. He said, vote. I'm kidding. No, he was vote in for... Baltimore giving his speech, no, 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 right? No, but he had somebody flying a plane over the convention. Oh, you're okay. kidding. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, in Texas. He had the plane flying over it saying, vote for Trump. Oh, it's, my gosh. It's called hubris. Anyway, yes, that's is. what he was. That was his role in the con, in the convention. The biggest thing that people are talking about is when um, Julian Castro went after Biden and was wrong when he did it. So, yeah. but for the most part, there was a lot of. He mostly just talked about health care. There was very little talk about Trump. I'd like to see more talk about Trump. I'd like to see more talk about the fact that he didn't really win the election. It was a um, <laughs> it was a fake win that was brought on by help from Russians and his own. <clears throat> collusion with them. Yeah. Um, so I have a problem with everybody treating him like he's a legitimate president when he really isn't. Yeah. You know, and when, when Harris did this to Biden uh, a few, you know, right. uh, debates ago, she went down in my estimation. It was, right. I thought it was tacky. It was, was. low class to do mm -hmm. that. And when uh, Castro did it last night, Thursday night, last, last night, night, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he went down in my estimation too. It's tacky. Oh, yeah. Why do that? Well, plus he was wrong. Other... Sorry, plus he was wrong. Plus he was wrong. So, I mean, it's a cheap, it's a cheap shot at best. And I agree. I, I agree with you totally. They ought to focus on Trump. Uh, there was a piece in the New York Times, I think this morning, uh, saying, gee whiz, uh, they spent an enormous, uh, Leonhardt, they spent an enormous amount of time on health care and about exactly what the health care insurance policy is going to look like. People I... don't. They don't really want to get into the weeds that way. We have right. bigger fish to fry. Right. We have more, more salient, dangerous problems to deal with. I agree. And the Democrats are all wrong. And, but a part of it is, is of course, the, the journalist moderators. Uh, there was right. another piece about saying, why do you always use journalists? You think they walk on water? How about using uh, history professors, uh, right. political science professors? How about right. using, you know, Lawyers. people from <laughs> the universities in that area right. uh, instead, of, instead of always leaving it to journalists? And journalists are looking for raw meat. It's not to their credit that they do this. Anyway, that's, that's my cut on the uh, debates. Uh, well, uh, I think it looks like by the numbers, and the numbers can change. We, we know that. They, they may not be, you know, of any consequence later on. Uh, it looks like uh, uh, Biden is vying with, uh, what, Bernie, Bernie? Warren now. Warren and Bernie. The three of them. The, the three, three of them. them. Not clear what's going to happen. Things will change. I agree. Uh, and, you know, the important thing to me and to many, many other people uh, is who, who's, who's capable of winning against Trump. Because if the one person who ultimately stands up is going to suffer all kinds of slings and arrows oh, in yeah. Trump's hands, he's going to try to, you know, decimate them if he can. And, and they have to be able to deal with that. What else you got on your list? Well, I, just one quick last thing is that I don't... In my own opinion, on your list, Cynthia. I don't think Biden can do it, and I think that Warren can. Um, well, we had something happen in um, you know, South Carolina. We were hoping that the Democrat was going to pull it out, but he barely, almost did. It was 48 to, what, 50-something. That, that was sad. So close. Within so a point close or two. that it makes me think there was another cheating issue going could be, on. Could be. We've got so much gerrymandering happening. And so much suppression, suppression, voter suppression happening that I think that especially probably in was South. involved, especially in the South. Yeah. And they're closing polls. They're changing the hours of, you know, being able to access them. So that's going to have a big impact. And yet still, this guy almost won. 
So yeah. I think it's too bad that he yeah. didn't. Yeah, the Republicans don't do themselves any service because in, in, in the years to come, it, everybody will remember this and, um, and treat them accordingly. I agree. The other sad legal event was that the judge in San Francisco said, no, you can't make uh, sanctuary seekers go through another country um, in order to seek sanctuary in the United States. Because Trump is trying to undo sanctuary in the country. Right, right. Without congressional approval. But uh, the courts reversed that, so I'm sad to see that. That wasn't a good thing. They um, reversed, so they, you mean so, they will so be they able to They validated Trump's policy oh, no. about requiring to go through other countries. And there are some countries, you know, in Central America that really don't like that at all. I don't like that. Well, and I don't think that any humanitarian likes that because it's very hard for them to go to another country and sit and wait right. on sanctuary application in the United States when the United States is doing slow ball on sanctuary applications. So right. it gives Trump an open hand to slow it all down and to make sanctuary elusive, yeah. The little girl from San Francisco, the one that um, needs those life-saving treatments, actually appeared before Congress. Yeah. And still, she has no stay of execution. Well, Trump for her. is doubling down. Supposed to be out he's tomorrow. Ignoring her. Supposed to be out tomorrow, yeah. 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 Ignoring yeah. She goes before Congress and still he's ignoring her. I hope the press covers that. That's, not, that's an much. example of the kind of, the kind of uh, things he does. And she, it's a death sentence for her, even yes. though she con contributed to a very important uh, medical uh, study. Right. Um, uh, just one of, one of many mean things. It's one mean thing after another. Right. It's almost that he wants to do mean things and hurt people. Well, that's he what does. He, that's what motivates him. It does. I, mean, I don't know how I we agree. can have a president like that. I really don't. I don't know how the world can tolerate that. Anyway, what's your next point? I think we're really not tolerating it very well. Well, the resignation of John Bolton, which wasn't really a resignation. Um, no, they, Trump they, says he fired him. Bolton says he resigned. But the thing I like about it is Bolton says, don't worry, I'll have my say. In time, I'll, I'll be able to get I believe he will. I believe so. He's a pretty aggressive guy. Mm -hmm. He might not have been the best uh, national security advisor for the country. Right. Too much a hawk. On the other hand, uh, the, there was a piece in the paper also about how uh, the two of them were fighting. And uh, he was more a hawk than, uh, than Trump, believe it or not. Um, and they, they had a parting of the ways. Whoever pulled the plug, parting of the ways, because they didn't agree on significant uh, war issues, if you will. Well, the main one that, that split them up, so to speak, that caused the divorce. Afghanistan. Um, was that, no, actually, it, the main one that got them was the Camp David meeting with the Taliban three right. days before 9-11. Right. Afghanistan. Right? Oh, Afghanistan. There, there was okay. going to be, um, you know, some discussion of the Taliban right. try to, you know, and, and, and Trump was really ill-advised to set, set that meeting or try to set that meeting three days before 9-11. At Camp David? He was thoughtless. What is, to have them on American soil, to invite them here where they killed 3,000 Americans. Yeah. Yeah. And, and no question about that. At, at a stronghold? Al-Qaeda. Al you know. At a presidential stronghold, no less? Yeah. To, yeah. to bring them there? Yeah. When, you know, Trump's not going to be the president forever. But it's not clear that uh, Bolton quit because of that. Right. It might have been part of their argument. And uh, it's not clear why Trump, you know, doubled back on it and changed his mind at the last, the last minute. But one thing is clear. Our discussions with the Taliban are over for a while, for a long while, perhaps. Right. And what's happening in Afghanistan is really a tragedy. After 18 years, there's really no, no result. I think the big, the big mistake that was, was Bush, though, is taking all the troops out of Afghanistan we, when we had effectively won that right. and putting them in Iraq and leaving Afghanistan to, to hang on the vine. And, and, of course, in that period, the Taliban and al-Qaeda uh, re recreated the, you know, their foothold in uh, mm -hmm. Afghanistan. What else you got? Right. Um, there's a new meeting with Rocket Man. I like the way you put that on the list. <laughs> So Kim Jong-un, and now there's something that you were just telling yeah, yeah. me about. Well, Kim Jong-un a... said a few days ago that he wanted to have talks with, uh, with Trump. And, and maybe you could say that Kim Jong-un's recent um, Rocket Man stuff, you know, his various missiles uh, off into the Sea of Japan, what have you, um, are, are intended to soften Trump for negotiations. Uh, that's Trump's actual, uh, that's Trump's style, too. Oh, know? yeah. Soften the other side. Right. Anyway, but then it comes out yesterday that um, one, one American um, agency, maybe intelligence agency, um, has uh, found and is investigating uh, Kim Jong-un's um, um, uh, hacking of American companies and the American government, American municipalities, 
uh, with the with these ransom these uh -oh, ransom ransomware, programs. Yeah. You know, it started with WannaCry a few years ago, and it's gotten much bigger. And some municipalities, like in Florida, for example, paid half a million dollars to get their data back. Others have resisted. There's no clear policy on it. And there's no clear solution or defense to it either. And wow. come to find, this is Kim Jong Un. So while Trump is doing kissy face, you know, and sending love letters and right. uh, all that stuff, the fact is, and I really wonder why the agencies didn't either know or tell him about this before, while he's doing kissy face with Kim Jong-un, Kim Jong-un Jong is holding up our, uh, you know, uh, our municipalities and corporations for huge money. And where does that money go? That, that whole, um, you know, initiative is intended to fund his nuclear program. Right. So it makes it even worse that he's, you know, doing this hacking scam thing uh, on American institutions and government agencies, government instrumentalities, and using that. It's all for the purpose of funding his, his nuclear program. Um, right. I, I don't think there's going to be a meeting anytime soon after that article. It's going to be an investigation, but not a meeting. Yeah. I hope not. Right. You don't need to rub noses anymore. It, just, it leaves, it leaves uh, Trump looking like he's been cuckolded uh, by the guy, right. you know, with the love letters, and he's been screwed from behind uh, by, uh, by Kim Jong-un. The whole time. Yeah. That's what the I think. Time. He's just been playing him right, the whole time. Right, right. This is horrendous. And right. it, doesn't, it doesn't make Trump look good at all. I agree. Well, I don't think much makes Nothing Trump makes look Trump good. Look Nothing good. makes yeah. him look good. Yeah. So he's trying to make himself look good, though, by... Um, uh, talking about China, you know, with uh, there was, I think he's just doing it. And some of the reporting that I read and, and heard also uh, is a similar idea that he's just doing it to control the, um, the stock market. That's the only reason he's talking about China being all so great and wonderful. Although we do know that China did come out and um, buy some soy. They bought some soy. They bought some soy. So they rescinded some of the tariffs and bought Their some stuff. Right. And, and Trump um, you Decided know, defer, deferred, deferred the tariffs he had threatened. But for, only till October 1st. So it's not like they got the... A, the like idea is to grab the weeks. headlines. That's the right. idea is to keep on the headlines. That's what I figure, know. too. He just wants to control... Well, and the stock market goes by kind of the headlines. So, you know, that's so what... He's learned how to do that. He's, he's learned, learned how, how to, to govern the media. Yep. And he's learned how to control the headlines uh, for the stock market. Well, I watched him in his speech. Well, I watched most of it. I couldn't handle it all of it. Um, but I watched most of his speech in Baltimore to the GOP. Um, and it was incredibly, he lies through the whole thing and spins everything so that it looks like, you know, the Democrats just want to ruin the country and he's our only hope. And it, it was just incredible to watch it's him amazing do that. amazing how somebody can just lie their way through the, uh, the campaign, then lie their way through the presidency. And 40% um, of, uh, of Americans believe the lies, lie after lie, when the responsible news organizations of the country are pointing it out and, even, in fact, counting coup on all the lies. Right. But you mentioned before we should talk about, you know, the decline in his numbers. What do you got? Oh, I've got some good numbers, actually. He's gone down quite a bit, even. So CNN did a poll. They just wanted to know, do you think that Trump deserves to be reelected? 36% said no, and 60% said yes. Um, so, and then ABC did a poll, and he's in June, he was at 44%, and now he's at 30, 38%. CNN did a poll, same kind of numbers. He's down five or six points in all of the polls, um, from 43 to 39, and Gallup did one from 44 to 39. So he's down five or six points since June till now. So maybe people are starting to wake up. Can we only hope? I don't mm -hmm. know. Hope that the farmers are. You know, that's, that's why the, the soy deal was so important, because right? the farmers were, were squawking. Um, you know, they don't, they don't want a, a giveaway. I mean, he's, what he's doing is he's, he's taking our tax money. And by the way, we have trillion-dollar deficits under him. And, right. uh, and he's taking what our, our tax money and paying them off so they're quiet. Um, even right. when they're going bankrupt. Yeah? Right. Um, so now he's trying, to, he's trying to pay them off again by trying to reduce the, the tariffs in, in this kind of temporary truce for a few days. Right. Uh, and the thought that uh, they're starting to make, make anti-Trump sounds. Well, I, he, I hope they, they straighten out. And I hope they realize that this is only temporary. And the fact is that he's not helping them, hasn't helped them at all. 
If they had listened to his speech yesterday in Baltimore, which I thought was kind of ironic that he's going to Baltimore after all the stuff that he said about Baltimore just recently. <laughs> it's like, did you bring extra security with you, dude, for sure all those did. rats? And sure that, he did. You know, sure he did. I, he didn't even bring it up at all, and I thought he might, but he didn't even touch it. But what surprised me was the reactions of the GOP in the audience. All of these, you know, congressmen and senators and everybody that's in there, and they are just eating it up, clapping and loving everything he's doing, and just... Well, remember, he's got people scattered through there, you that know? That started, and yes, he's got the people four standing behind him with the signs. The whole thing is calculated. This happened in the Bush, uh, in the W. Bush administration. Uh, well, Cheney came out here one time, and I went at the convention center, and, and they had the whole thing wired, you know? Right. It wasn't a natural, organic kind of response to him. Right. Um, so the same thing, but worse, much worse, is happening uh, under Trump. Right. Um, I agree. Like, they started shouting, four more years, four more years. Oh, no. and And you could just tell by the way it started. It wasn't like a, like you said, it wasn't like this organic, you know, response. One person over here, and it kind of spread over here, but it didn't even go through the whole crowd. Yeah. And I thought, oh, boy. And so he stopped it. And I thought, oh, okay. You can tell that was a plant. Yeah. They, um, they, they always do that. Well, comedians do it. There's going to be all kinds of dirty tricks going in, like four or five states have killed primaries. Oh, my gosh, that to it's, me it's is horrendous, huge. you know. Now, it's not the first time a state has killed a primary, but under Trump, you know, a number of, of them have, and it's all the red states and all states in which, uh, you know, he has this big base. Uh, so it's, it's really awful what he's doing. And, and you get, you know, all these little things that he's doing around the country in terms of mm -hmm. suppression and suppressing any Republican, um, any Republican contender right. uh, for the nomination. At the same time, a lot of Republicans are leaving. They're leaving, oh, yeah, they are. They're leaving Congress. The ones that have some kind of scruples. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Too bad they can't stay around and do stuff. And do something, which yeah, is what, yeah. they don't have enough scruples in and my that, mind. And that takes us to uh, gun control, you know. Right. So we have all this noise about gun control until recent, a couple of days ago, the corporations, big corporations, all kinds of big corporations right. get together and uh, make an appeal. Uh, it was to Congress, but it was really to Trump and uh, um, what's his name? Uh, um, my, 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 my leader of uh, the Senate. Oh, McConnell. Okay. Now you've got me. I, Mitch. <laughs> Moscow Mitch, you Mitch, mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. McConnell. There we go. So I was going to say really McConnell, but I'm to, like, right. to, the, to the Senate, you know, right. to finally let bills for gun control that have passed in the House be at least considered in the Senate. And, um, um, you know, they came. They made right. a strong pitch. They went wide. They would talk to everybody. They, were, they sent a letter to everybody in the Senate, everybody in the Senate. Um, and I, nothing has happened so far. And I no. speculate that nothing will happen. There won't be any gun control, even though the voices are, uh, the voices are re increasing now. Yeah. Well, Moscow Mitch's stance on the whole thing is he's not going to do anything until he knows that the president is on board. And he's said that. So it's not like we just wonder if that's, that's what he's doing. That's not the Constitution He has come out and made a statement well, saying that he won't. Now, this is the only thing about the debate last night that I think could go wrong for Beto O'Rourke. And, and it was a very impassioned thing that he said, and, and I agree with him, but I'm afraid that people that are kind of on the fence with this whole gun thing, he said, you, what did he say? Hell yes, we're going to take back all of the, um, all of the AR-15s and all the AK-47s. We're going to take them back. Yes, we're going to buy them back. You bet we're going to take those guns back. And, you know, he talked about had the mom that he um, had spoken with that was in El Paso, who she watched her daughter die and bleed out because there were so many people shot that they didn't have enough ambulances to get to this gal. And she died before the people could get to her. And, yeah. the, you know, the mom couldn't do anything about yeah, it. Yeah. If it wasn't this, you know, he made the point of these guns were made for war to shoot somebody as many times as you can. Congress hasn't done anything in all these years, uh, all the way back to uh, Sandy Hook. Um, right. And we really, have, you know, we, even Columbine, nothing. Um, right. So, you know, we have, we have the issue, and I think this pervades everything, but take a moment about it, is, um, you know, should the American public do, select a candidate, uh, a Democratic candidate, who will change the system all around, who will be revolutionary, 
Or should the American public pick a candidate like Biden, who will be incremental, evolutionary? Um, <clears throat> you know, and I think there's a lot of people around who would like to turn this thing on its head and, um, and do some drastic changes before it's too late. And the question I put to you is, uh, is it too late? Uh, should we take evolutionary or revolutionary? What do you think? Ooh, I personally think revolutionary because in this particular time, normally I wouldn't, but because of all the things that Trump has done, we can't have a moderate get in there. We need somebody who's going to get in there and try to fix this mess that he's it's, made. It's true, but uh, you know that that is not going to bring that but is not going to bring the, the base over. I On agree. the other hand, maybe nothing will bring the base over. That exactly. you can't bring the base over. So maybe you have to appeal people to middle class people and say, wait a minute, we got such serious problems here. We've really got to, you know, redo the system. Right. What else you got in your list? Um, okay, oh, we, we changed. Uh, oh, we already did both of those things. Um, is there a recession coming? What do you think? You know, he appointed someone else to the Fed board, a guy who has uh, said publicly, uh, and of course, the, this guy will be approved in the Senate, guaranteed. Jay Powell is gone? No, no, no. Oh. Just another member of the board. Oh, okay. Um, this guy has said publicly he believes in lowering rates. So what Trump is doing is he's trying, he's pushing to lower rates. And he'll criticize Powell again. Um, and so he's going to blame someone else uh, for, you know, his, his Michigas. And, and, I, and I think that we're going to see that go on. One commentator in yesterday's paper said, you know, don't expect a recession or a depression per se. Don't expect anything dramatic. Expect flat and down slow. Right. And I think that may be the case, not, not because that's sh what should happen by all the indicators, you know, and all the mistakes the government has made, um, but because Trump is trying to boost it up and to some extent he may be successful. Right. And the thing has a, a, you know, a, a momentum all of itself. And, and maybe, maybe it'll go down slowly. But one thing is clear, it's not going to go up. Right. So the mistakes are so profound, and there's so right. many mistakes. And furthermore, I mean, if you link um, national security um, with, um, you know, with the economy, and I think you should, right. and with the global order, for that matter, right. because the which economy is, is global. Germany's having a terrible time. And with time. climate change, which has a big effect on the economy of, yes, it does. of every place these extreme storms hit. Right. I mean, we, we don't know what's going to happen, but, it, but none of it is promising. None of it looks good. Uh, right. So, we, you know, and by the way, at uh, one o'clock today, we're, uh, we're going to do an interview of a guy who was the commandant of the Coast Guard Polls are come. Uh, who, who uh, oh, wow. gave a talk at the uh, Paul uh, Chung uh, lecture at UH um, uh, last week, two weeks ago. And so we can talk about those very things because he's, he's a government insider and he can speak Ooh, about climate change right. and he can speak about national security. One of the things he mentioned in his talk, and I mentioned this in the same connection, um, is that Russia has, uh, has put uh, assets and facilities uh, near the Arctic, which is melting and which is now freely navigable. You know? right. and, uh, and, and they have taken the position that because of that, it belongs to them. And they have said to the United States and others that if the, if the United States and others want to you know, put a ship through that passage, this is close to the North Pole, they should ask permission from Russia. Oh, my. And this hasn't been tested yet, and I doubt the United States Navy is going to take it seriously. But Russia is making this outrageous claim that it owns that area in the Arctic. We have serious problems in world and global security yes, we do. and global leadership economically. Yeah. Yes, we do. Well, you know, was it a few weeks back, three weeks maybe ago, we were talking about that very thing. I was talking about how they have this floating nuclear plant. It's not, it's a reactor. It is floatable. So that's what they're moving over there too. So they've got those big ships, ships and, um, that are capable of carrying nuclear weapons sure. right right off of Alaska now. So now they are down in Venezuela. We already know they've got an uh, air base down there. And so they're on either side of us now. So Trump is losing, you know, all these engagements uh, all over yeah. Afghanistan we talked about. But, you know, there's also Syria, which we're so impotent about. Um, you know, we, we really we can't handle things south of the border. We just gave up on south of the border and, right. and for other people to take away from us. 
We've distanced ourselves from all of Asia. Uh, our relationship with even our best ally, Japan, is at risk these days. Right. Uh, so, uh, and, and of course, we have, we have Kim Jong-un. Uh, so what's happened is Trump, in, in his nationalist and isolationist policies, has wrecked American leadership oh, yeah. uh, geopolitically, economically, and security-wise. Absolutely. It's, it's, and I don't think the people in Alabama, or Arkansas, or Kentucky know anything about they that. They don't. Yeah. Well, you know, when, when Justin Amash went back to his, um, his district and he did that one uh, talk story town hall where he told people, he actually quoted out of the, the Mueller report the things about that happened. And there were tons of people afterwards that were interviewed that said, I had no idea. I had no idea there was anything bad that came out of the Mueller report. And I think, how can people live well, like that with, with, with their bites. heads in the sand? And I think, why are you an ostrich with your head in the sand? What yeah. are you doing? Yeah. Meanwhile, our attorney general is going after the, the FBI guys. guys McKay, oh, my like gosh, Comey, yeah. And, uh, and really making, making the whole thing look like a, a charade. Right. Uh, and at the same time, Congress is going after impeachment. Um, and Nadler and others in Congress are bent, bent on um, right. following the track of the uh, Mueller report and other, other information to build right. a case. And we talked about that last time. Yes, we did. And the timing is, as we get closer, first elections are five months away, and the, the 2020 national election is uh, a year away. Um, we're going to see more of that. It's going to yes, be sp spooned out by these, um, by these um, investigations in, in the House. Uh, query whether it's enough, whether it's soon enough, whether the people in, uh, in the base will accept any of it. But it will, I think, have some effect on the election. We can't escape that. Too many lawsuits, too many investigations, too many right. things are coming out. And too right. many people, too many media are interested in, in, in publishing that information. What else you got? Um, I want to add one more thing to the gun thing, um, because I think it's kind of important. Right after Beto O'Rourke had that impassioned plea saying, hell yes, we're going to take away those AR-15s, um, he got a tweet from, and I can't, now I didn't write his name down, Cisco something, um, and I'd remember his name and I don't. A Republican representative um, sends him a tweet saying, I have, your, I have an AR-15 for you or something. No, uh, it was definitely a threat that is now being investigated as a threat. Um, Twitter even took it down to the point, it was such a threat that Twitter took it down. I wish I had written okay, well, it let's down. Okay, let's move but, on, Cynthia. Okay. What else you got? Because we're about Republicans out of time. Republicans are doing that. Okay, what else do we have? Um, we did all of this. I think we actually are gonna end on time. <laughs> and you know, the Mueller report is definite. And, and I want the media to, and I think I sort of said this a, a little earlier too, is I want the media to stop acting like Trump won fair and square, right? Um, Russia helped them win. He's not a legitimate president. And no one seems to come from okay, that and I place. Have, and I have a closing point too. My okay. closing point is the most important news, news piece, uh, you know, in our time, in our lives really is climate change. Yes. Because you, you saw what happened in, in the Bahamas. Uh, that place was just flattened. It was destroyed, right. virtually destroyed, and other places will be destroyed like that too. Um, not Alabama, at least not right away. <laughs> that was so stupid. They're uh, only within mm. the Sharpie bubble, so they're okay. Well, my point is that Trump still denies climate change. Yes. Trump's government still denies climate change. Yes. Trump's government is doing nothing about climate change, denying it in every way. And in fact, pulling back regulations and defenses to climate change that you would like to see. Um, and it, it's, it's horrendous because of the consequences involved. Right. And if there was no other issue that deserved him being, you know, thrown out of office, it's climate change. We, we're uh, the, the whole world, and including, of course, the U.S., including Hawaii right here, uh, is at tremendous risk of these storms and right. sea level problems. And we had really better get a leader who can deal with it. Because as he deals with it, other people in the world deal. He has, exactly. he has depressed the entire global effort on climate change. Yes, and that has. is completely intolerable in the largest sense of the word. And mm -hmm. now we're out of time. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank it's you, great Gary. to have you on the show. Thank you. We'll do this again job. next week. We will do this again next week, only on Wednesday. We will not be on Friday. We might be a little behind some of the news, but that's all right. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Cynthia Sinclair, Phi Beta Kappa.
Thank you very much. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha.